So first thing I want you to do, I want you to comment below and let me know what in your mind, have you had a past experience where you had to deal with a, uh, past, a bad customer or a client? I know you have because I have as well. I want you to comment below if you're willing to share your experience or what you did to be able to save that client or be able to pass them to another thing if they weren't a good fit. What is the best way to deal with unhappy clients or customers? So there's also two layers to this I want to address with you, but first comment below, let me know. Now, going into the question, uh, of course, even for me, uh, working with a lot of clients, 90% of our clients are extremely successful with what we do. Before, when I was starting out at the early on, sharing with you a story, there were times where I took on clients because I wanted to basically build a business, but I wasn't able to actually grow their, their revenue uh, based on what I had projected, for example, to build, you know, how we're always ROI driven and we want to drive more revenue for every single client. We are successful in the majority, but the minority that weren't successful, which is why right now we have a lot of filters and very uh, a very intense qualification process to be able to qualify people that come into the business. So we qualify them on their revenue, on the assets that they have, on the team members that they have, on the uh, resources that they have to, to implement and execute, on multiple different factors on the client level, on their business level, to see if they're really a good fit for us to come in, work with them to grow their business online. So in my experience, I have had a uh, bad client before uh, or had the client I had to let go of because I wasn't able to help her specifically grow her business. Now, I'm gonna, not going to share her exact name or her business, but she was basically selling alcoholism program to be able to prevent women or help women that were in, uh, that were drinking a lot of alcohol or they were alcoholics that didn't identify themselves as alcoholics and they, she wanted to sell this course, this workshop to be able to help these people, almost like an AA program, but specifically to her personal brand and helping women. But the issue was, I was in my mind when I took it on, I was like, yeah, like for sure, like we can do this, no problem. These strategies will work, these tactics will work. And then we had to implement these uh, strategies and we didn't get the traction that we had. Upon reflection now at that time, you know, I, I was like, yeah, Benson, you know, you got this, you can change any target audience is mine. You can get them to convert and buy a program. They weren't, we weren't able to hit the metrics that we wanted to hit. We wanted to drive the revenue for her. And in the end, we had to actually give her her money back and I had to do a full refund for her because I wasn't able to actually help her with the results. And I always want to, every client we work with, I want to provide them with revenue and value in their business compared disproportionately to how much they pay us. It means that if they pay us X amount of dollars, I want them to make five to 10 times more. Otherwise, I'm not doing the best work and the best job to provide them with results that they need. So refund the client to her because I wasn't able to do it. I basically told her, you know, I treated it with respect. I said that I wasn't able to help her with actually growing the business to where she wanted to be. I wanted to give the money back. She made a significant investment. It was in the six figure range to grow her business with us. And so I wanted to give it back the money. Even though we spent months on it, it was okay. I think it's up to your values. I know there's people that um, don't wanna give the money back if they have a bad client or whatnot, or if they have a bad experience or whatever it is. Two things for yourself to know that we've implemented qualification process. Make it very strict, the criteria that you wanna take on a customer or a client. Who is a good fit? Why are they a good fit? Who is not a good fit? And why are they not a good fit? The second thing is you wanna make sure that what is your policy if you're, you're working with clients? What is it that you wanna do? Because there, I know there's big management consulting firms or agencies where they do the work, they get paid for it, and they don't refund the money. The second thing is they, they do the work and then they just like, it's a final, it's a, they give the money back similar to how to, why I do it. Just, it's my personal responsibility. I feel like when a client invests with us, they're putting their faith and their trust with me. So I wanna give back the money if we're not able to produce the results that they have. Uh, that's just the way I think. That's my value, that's my core thing that I have. Um, you have to find out what works for you. Um, you also, another layer you have to think about is also your reputation. You know, your, who you are as a person, but also at the same time, the reputation that you have among the business industry. If you really have the tr best product or service that your target audience has to produce the result or solve a problem that they have, then you should have no problem offering some kind of risk reversal guarantee or something that takes the pressure off the client or the customer and then provides them the most value. Figure that out what that is for you. And it's also tied to another angle I'm gonna go into, it's called preeminence, which is taught to me by Jay Abraham. Basically is, are you the most trusted advisor, the most trusted company to your target audience and how can you position yourself and actually do that in the things that you do, not what you say, right? How you act with your customers, how you deal with it. Obviously you wanna deal with them with respect, 
and that the whole thing. So I went through multiple different things, but that's just me being real with you, like how how it works in this in the real world. You know, I've lost more deals than I've gained more clients. So I've lost more. I've, no, I say that in terms of the before they become a client, I've lost more deals than I've gained more deals. But when we gain those deals, nine out of ten clients extremely successful with their business right now. So one out of ten, we don't refund them. It might be the results weren't that great and we focus on a way to work it around. For example, it could be a partial, uh, an extra three months or six months of free work to be able to help you grow your business. Whatever it takes to grow the business, there's multiple ways that you can do it, right? So you wanna find that arrangement that works if you're in the client services business. If it's a simple product, like you're selling it, then you can just give them a refund. Uh, I recommend you do that because word spreads and it's never good to have a bad reputation, bad reviews, especially in the digital age right now. People can just say anything about you online. That's why it's so important for you to make sure that you are adding the right value, you're not trying to scam people, and you're not trying to do anything else with the, peop uh, with the, with the person. So thanks for watching the episode. I want you to comment below and let me know what specific, uh, what value or insights did you get from that? I know the way that I shared with you wasn't extremely in a flow, uh, flow process, but I wanted to be real with you. There was multiple things I wanted to get across to you. Comment below and let me know what insights you got from it, how you're dealing with clients based on what I just shared with you. And I'll see you in the next video.